Hey everyone, it's Sherry Dunleavy, your inspirationista, and I want to welcome you to All Things Awesome. This is a podcast where we feature ordinary people, just like you and me, who are choosing to live their life in extraordinary ways. And to uh, welcome my next guest is, um, is bittersweet for me because this is a woman who was a support system for so many years. And um, I know that to be uh, front and present in front of a microphone, in front of a camera, is uh, something that she's not used to doing, but something that she has stepped up into that role. Um, let me explain a little bit. Linda Carroll is our guest today, and she is uh, carrying on a mission that was started by her son, Michael, many years ago called Michael's Meanies. And Michael was the star of all of this. Michael was the developer of all of this. Michael was the person that had the passion behind all of this. And mom was mom who drove Michael to the interviews and drove him to the hospitals and allowed him to carry out those passions. Unfortunately, we lost Michael a few years ago, and mom has carried on Michael's mission. So, Linda, thank you, because I know this is something that you really don't like doing too much. <laughs> I do not. <laughs> but you do it. It's definitely out of my comfort zone, yes. 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 So, first of all, um, tell us a little bit about your son, Michael. Uh, Michael was incredible. Um, anybody that met him is you know they uh, the biggest you know he was just a nice person and it was genuine it didn't matter if it was a star that he was talking to he met Katy perry or if it was a two-year-old cousin that he was playing with he treated everybody the same he um was genuine there wasn't anything fake about him um he accepted people for the way they were um the, i always just told him to be the best michael ever I didn't need him to be anything more, anything. He didn't have to be great, even though I kind of thought he was <laughs> going to have some, something was in there. Mm -hmm. um, but I didn't need him, you know, I just seemed to be the best Michael ever. And the best thing that people, that's exactly what they always say to me. That's what they remember. Him opening the door, his smile. He always, yeah, and that's a, that was the most important thing to me, to be the best Michael ever. I, I remember his sense of humor. Oh my well, gosh. He was quick witted. Very <laughs> funny. <laughs> my sister in law would come to visit and she'd go home and say her cheeks hurt from yes. him. No. <laughs> you, you re her laugh. Michael reminded me a little bit um, because he, I, I was on the radio. And Michael was a guest on my show a couple of times. And um, he was like having Robin, a mini Robin Williams on your show. <laughs> True. He really was because you just never knew where it was going to go. He'd break right. into a character and, uh -huh. and somehow the humor always came back to you and his grandma. Yeah. <laughs> his grandma he adored. Yes. Yeah. He always included her in everything. Absolutely. Yeah. So tell us um, a little bit about Michael's journey because his child, he was a very happy child, yes. spread a lot of happiness, but right. yet if you were to write his story about his childhood, Man. Right. I mean, he never, ever was sick as a baby, never had a cold, never, we never dealt with any sicknesses. And then all of a sudden he started, he, did, he got a cold he couldn't get rid of. So at six, we ended up being diagnosed with leukemia, um, which he went through, never complained. At six, he went through spinal taps. He went through being stabbed. You know, he was called being stabbed. <laughs> but uh, he, you know, went through all kinds of procedures. Um, and then he came out of remission, um, started all over again. He had reactions, anaphylactic reactions. We almost lost him a couple times. Um, but lo and behold, there he was. We'd go in, you know, to the ICU and he'd be sitting there playing the GameCube, you know, convince the nurses to bring in a GameCube to the ICU. Um, then he did fine for seven years. Uh, we were on a cruise and he got lost some feeling in his hand. I thought it was because he was out in the ocean lifting up rocks and scuba diving and swimming with a dolphin. And I thought, well, there must be just that. I'm like, just rest, whatever. Um, but when we came home, it kept getting weaker and weaker. Um, so we went to the doctor and it ended up being a brain tumor. Mm. So, um, you know, when they told him that he had, because they're at that age of 16, you can't hide it anymore. They tell you what's going on. Really? Okay. Um, and he asked him point blank and they told him he had about a year to live. And he was like, 
um, that's not good enough for me. And she said, well, you're going to need a miracle. And he said, well, then I'm just going to have to go out and find a miracle. So, but meanwhile, he had, you know, every time he seen all those kids, he was like, mom, they're really sick. I'm like, I know, but he just, did, he never said he was sick. He never wanted to be associated with just cancer. Right. But wanted people to be, you know, worried about that. So he came up with the meanies because he was always giving them a, a stuffed animal or, you know, something nice. And he said, it's not nice. I don't feel nice. I feel mean. I want to, you know, we need something like that. So he came up with the stress balls, the meanies three different kinds of childhood cancer, and that way they could use them. They could throw them, they could stomp on them, squeeze them when they were getting, trying to uh, access their port or put an IV in. Okay, so let's let's go back to that. So um, Michael was a very talented artist. He loved to draw. Um, he loved cartoons, he loved voices. In fact, I, think I remember him telling me he wanted to be a voiceover actor, right. um, but, um, at some point, he decided he wanted to do, he wanted to have some kind of control over this. Would you right. say that that's where this started? Right, right. Because, you know, we forced him, you know, I mean, it, the second time around, he knew exactly what he was doing. Um, but yeah, the treatment was forced upon, you know, it made him sick. Um, you know, to be accessed, he had a port put in. So he had to be accessed through that. Any kind of treatment, any of the, the antibiotics they had to take that tasted bad he we he but that was one thing he could control and he could make something good happen of it mm -hmm. so, the so, we wanted. so did he know that he wanted to do a stress ball right away or he did, did he, he wanted he, yeah he wanted he knew right away um he had drew it on his ipad on the way to the the hospital um for a treatment and said, I want these to be stress balls that they can squeeze because I'm mad or they can throw them and they really won't hurt anybody if you throw them. Um, and I'm like, okay, you know, because he's Michael and whatever he said, you know, wanted to do, I was always behind him and backing him up. And I said to Paul, I said, you know, I don't know. It, to me, it sounds like a great idea. And, he, and um, so then he made them into um, clay models. And we took them to the hospital and I kind of stood back while he explained to the nurses and the doctor to see they're honest, if they were just going, oh yeah, or if they really thought. And I got the impression that they really thought that was a good idea, that he was right. It's not a nice thing. So that's that we decided to go forward with it. And he made them out of clay and Paul worked with the manufacturer online, trying to get the measurements and everything. And in person, if you'd see the clay models that he made and what we ended up with, they are identical. They look exactly the same. Do you still have those clay models? You do. Yeah. yeah I bet you do. Do you, you have do. any meanies? Do you have any? I see them on your shirt. Do you have any meanies with you? I have a whole box load, but I don't have, I can oh. go off for one. That's all right. So there's three different ones. There's three different ones. Yep. You know we have Lily lymphoma, and we have Terry, the terrible tumor, and Louie leukemia. Um, and they're based on just three different types of childhood cancer that he chose. Okay, so then, um, so we had him on, um, wow, we had him on a couple of times, but. Um, you had, the first time he was trying to get money. Remember he was playing yes. and he needed money. Yes, he needed money. <laughs> we helped him raise money. Right. Okay, right. and yes. then we said, when they come, when they come in, we wanna see them, and he yes. brought them in. He, that had to be like Christmas day when those came in the mail. Well, it was right before Christmas, actually like two weeks before Christmas, uh, Paul and I decided to just get a small shipment of 200 because they couldn't order. We ordered the rest of them, but they couldn't be here and we begged them to see if they could rush them here. Um, so we got a small order of 200 and on our Facebook page or our web page, there's a picture of Michael that day when they, they came and it was there. It was me and him and my, and Paul and my mom was here and he was just in, you know, tears. He was all tearing up. He's like, I can't believe it. So, um, and then when we first started to take, we got to take him to Morgantown. We got to take him to Pittsburgh and he got to actually give them to some kids and it was really something to see that and to watch that reaction with he's just so gentle with the kids and explaining to them you know and it'll be okay yeah that's 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 so amazing yeah. your, your child yeah. was so amazing so yeah. how long uh from having how how many how long did he get to distribute them 
Um, well, they came in, like I said, we got the first ones. Um, he got a little bit of them in December. Mm -hmm. um, and then the rest came in February. And that's when they came and they have a little message in them. And they came without the message. And they, we, there was a mix up on and we came with some paper. So we put, he put a thing out on Facebook asking if someone if they could come, people could come help us put it in because we had 15,000 meanies that had to be stuffed with this little and so we were like oh my heavens and um we got this huge huge turnout everybody from all three of his schools from madison Philadelphia, and wheeling park we had football team and cheerleaders and teachers and they all came to help him um, and so he was able to see him in all 50 states um and i, I think it was a, it's a time a, a, I think it was three countries he got to see him in. Mm -hmm. um, and he so, but now we've continued on and we're in 21 countries in 412 facilities in on all seven continents. Wow. Yeah. So we have like, you wow. know, Canada, Brazil's one, Singapore, they're in Ireland, Japan. Um, and behind me, you can see like the map. Of yes, the I was going to say the map. He That's started amazing. that. Um, he started putting them on. That was his when we would get a new one he would put it on um and then we went to the world map and he started we got a few in canada at the time um and we got some in australia so um and now i've continued a different size one so i know which ones he's put on and which ones but i continue to put them on as we get them so um so so when did we lose michael um we lost him july 3rd five years ago yeah, it was almost a year. They told him he had a year, um, and it, that was in June, on June 17th, and it was almost, a, you know, just a little over they gave us, so. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And so. But it's amazing, you know, like I said, that's what keeps us going, um, you know, for Paul and I to do this. Um, Paul does all the computer ends. Um, I'm one that tells him, I want to do this. He's like, okay. <laughs> so then he'll figure it out um so he does all the computer ends and so, let, so let me ask you um i know it had i mean i i lost a son but i i only knew my son 29 days i didn't know him 16 17 years <laughs> and um the vibrant personality that you know he was he was your only okay. child right yes he's um own. the heartache uh, that you must still feel how how do you do what you do and process your grief at the same time um i you know i don't know i i still think it's all him um i i just you know I, he when someone would ask him oh they, they don't know how he's doing it well he would tell him like nobody asked me nobody asked me if this is what i wanted to do because this isn't what i would have chosen right but he's going to do what he had to do and he dealt with it mm -hmm. and so every time you know, Paul and I didn't want to do something, or we're like, okay, but you know what Michael be telling us? Suck it up and go do what you have to do. You know, he would don't, say you suck know, it up. and he would, he would, you know, he wouldn't make any bones about it. He would yeah, tell he us. Meant words. Yeah. So you know, and Paul and I, you know, we're in the same boat. You know, it's one of us are like, okay, well maybe we can do this today, and then the other one's like, well no, and then we're like. But you know what Michael would tell us, you know, we just went to ride the roller coaster in Kennywood and, and it was because of him. We knew he would have been there opening day to ride it. Um, so we thought we had some little ones that wanted to go, but they decided no one they seen it. So Paul and I went back up just by ourselves one day and just went up to ride that roller coaster and, you know. Yeah. So I've never met a young man who truly lived his life. Right and squeezed out every last drop of life and excitement and adventure. Right. Like well, yeah, I mean, the week before he was diagnosed, he was swimming with dolphins in, mm -hmm. you know, Grand Cayman Islands. So, yeah, and that was it, you know, that was another thing when we, you know, come February, he would plan vacation. We would always, he, he, you know, he's gone a lot of places, <laughs> you know, I said old parents and, you know, single child, he got to go a lot of places and, um, but he was never spoiled about it. And he never, yeah. you know, he, he never went and said, Oh, I went here and I went here and I went here and I went here. You know, he's very careful on, you know, 
if he, you know, they were, he knew kids didn't get to do it. He was very, you know, I mean, he was, he was humble, but his excitement was contagious. You were genuinely excited that he got to experience this. Oh yeah. And you know, he always had a story and like the teachers at school, I would always tell them, if you really don't, and they found out early <laughs> how to rope him in, you know, <laughs> or, you know, in history, they had a, you know, a lesson and he had something here at the house in this room, some souvenir, when we would go for souvenirs, they were very meticulously picked because uh-huh. of had a meeting, not just, well, I need this and this and this and this and this. He would, you know, pick out the ship that had this or the, you know. Mm-hmm. So he was very, and so he always had a story to go along with it. Well, I, I'm telling you, I mean, he genuinely lived his life yeah. so big and so bold and so on fire. Right. That, you know, he, he lived a great life in 16 years that most people who might live to 80 right. still aren't living. Right. And they don't. No. Yeah. And that's, um, yeah, we, that's what I said. We can our, you know week before you know we're on a cruise ship you know so that you know and what a menu that he was on so that's what he does and now for us to continue on like i said it's hard but between paul and i we convince each other you know it's like what would michael say yeah okay so let's let's talk about um you know after michael's death how soon did you pick this up was there a time that you were like I just can't. I just, I can't. Um, There was, except for we had so many, like he had found me hospitals. And so I was online the whole time. I mean, literally, you know, a week before he was like, try this hospital in New York, try this one I found. So I had all these emails out to people. So even after he passed, I was getting these emails back, you know, Mm -hmm. and I was like, Oh, now what do we do? And I knew that's exactly what he wanted to, you know, that was when, you know, we got all 50 states and when we got, you know, they were like, well, what's next? And he's like, well, I just want to keep giving them to the kids. Sadly, you know, all these kids are diagnosed, you know, every year. Yeah. I mean like that, it's exciting to get them into the hands of kids, but at the same time, these are all kids that are diagnosed with cancer. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's the bad thing, you know, and we have, you know, every year in the U.S., like 16,000 kids are diagnosed and 20% won't make it, you know, and, but you're not going to tell them that. No. Because all no. these kids and that, you know, they just keep fighting and fighting, you know, they're all bald and they have that big smile and that's just what they do. And that's what he did, you know, up mm-hmm. until, you know, the very end. So what, what are you doing now? Like what goals do you set for yourself and how is this being funded and how are you carrying on this five years after this all started? Yeah. Well, we had a big fundraiser. Um, you know, I don't, I, um, and we have a lot, we have some friends that, you know, donate, you know, that's what their cause is now. They want to, you know, I have my fourth grade teacher and her husband, um, I just, I never thought, and now we're best friends and they, that's their, you know, and they're in Virginia and they have a race down there and they have meetings there. Now they have a little table set up with meetings to help us spread the word. Um, so we always take donations, um, and we're okay. And then we'll probably, I'd like to, to plan another fundraiser here. Um, you know, we don't need hundred thousand dollars, you know, and whatever Paul and I, that's our, what that's you know that's our son that's what he wanted to do and we're going to continue it and you know set it up make sure after we're gone um unless you know they find a cure and that would be wonderful and then we'll you know have fun with these but i can't see that you know when they're only getting four percent funding it's not a whole lot for these kids that are our future so um do you keep replenishing the same hospitals and what uh, that that you Um, right now we do um it's, you know, we've gotten like with 412 hospitals, that's a ton. Um, and some hot children's hospitals don't deal with cancer. Um, mm-hmm. So now I've probably gotten about two dozen um, that we've done refills on. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, we just had one in New York um, and they had emailed and wanted to know they were having a fundraiser for, because um, September is Childhood Cancer Awareness Month. 
Mm -hmm. um, so they want, they were having a, a, not a fundraiser, they were just having an event with all the kids and all that. And so they wanted to know if um, we would give them some meanies so they could give them out as not door prizes, just so the ones that Awareness. were coming back for a visit and didn't receive one, they wanted to see if it would be okay to give them one. Mm -hmm. So again, I'm like, Michael would get it. <laughs> say yes, you know, so, and then we have ones that um, we can't use, um, you know, like they have a flaw, they have something wrong with them, uh, eyeball might be a little smudged or something, and, we, and Michael was like, you can't send them to the kids. So, um, and besides the obvious, you know, they're for dealing with frustration and stuff. Um, a couple different places have um, a reentry to school program, like when the kids have been out for school, um, and they'll go into the schools and explain to the, you know, why this child's coming back and maybe he doesn't have any hair, or maybe he's a little apprehensive, or maybe he has a pick line still in. Um, so they asked if they could have meanies to take to these reentry classes. So we give them them to put them to good use. Nice. Um, the local blood drives that we have around here for the Red Cross, um, I go to them and give them a meanie and they can use that as their squeeze object. And any blood drive around here you might see. Oh, like, you know, how nice. Something. So um, what yeah. message now is in, in those? It's the same, same it message is in there. We left the same message uh, because it might, it's Michael's right, he wrote it. And it explains why he decided to do it and what they can do for them. And, you know, we're just the messenger at this point. You know, do you again, do talks like, on this? Do any, does anyone ever invite you to do talks on this? Um, we have been to, I went up, um, well, Michael was actually with us when um, they, the Rotary Club had asked him um, and he went in, Actually, we had to send my mom and a friend because that was one of not his better days, so he couldn't go. Um, and then I went up to um, some other kids, um, I, I, and I hate to say troubled kids because they're not, they're just have lost their way for right now. Mm -hmm. um, so I went up and they were interested in doing um, like a report and they wanted, one of the girls had heard about Michael in school. Um, so she wanted to, so, and then whatever, you know, they have a couple, um, child life conferences, which the child life people are the ones that do it. Um, last October, November, Paul and I went to St. Louis and met up with uh, a woman and we were hoping to stay, um, and actually go to the conference, but some medical problems came with my mom. So we drove them out and dropped them off and came back. Um, but you know, we knew, and again, you know, we took, we, it was like, oh, we're going to do it. And we're like, well, you know, Michael would have been there. So, yeah. um, yeah. So, you know, yeah. What try, you know, whenever anybody now. wants to talk about it. Um, <laughs> yeah. So was there any, like, cause I'm sure he had a big audacious goal with this. What, what was his big goal and has that been met? Well, he wanted to get him in all 50 states, mm -hmm. um, you know, and then, uh, you know, his goal was every child with cancer to have one. <laughs> so I don't know, you know, hopefully, I don't know how close we are to that because um, we've given out over 60,000, so, which is amazing. Um, but, you know, we just, we just keep giving them out um, and help, you know, we want to make sure that that's, we just continue on. That kind of is the only way that we can keep going on. That we have these you know it, it, it's hard maybe for people that haven't lost don't understand but there's not you know he's our only one so there's not much at this point besides these that we you know so what kind of feeling do you get when you know you're carrying out michael's mission um kind of you know it's a, it's like I, I i know it's the thing to do and i'm thrilled when i get letters you know and people are like you know, they'll send us a picture and of course that bald smile, you know, um, and you know, oh, they loved them or I, oh, they were wonderful for me and you know, they helped. Um, but it's, again, like this, this should be him, not me. It's his thing, you know, it's not, when people say, oh, this is such a good thing. It is, it's wonderful, but it's not mine. It's his, yeah, I, I, no, that's I, my boy. Yeah. The sense of pride that you have. Yeah. And that's what, you know, Paul and I have never, a lot of people don't know our names, you know, and they, their name, they know them now. Um, but like when Michael was here, it was like, you're, you're Michael's mom. You're, you know, for the longest time, I had a couple of teachers at Park and then they were like, 
I'm so sorry. I don't know your name <laughs> because they knew me as Michael's mom or Michael's dad, you know, so, or Michael's grandma. You know, we all three came with him no matter what. We were his biggest support team. So, yeah. Yeah. So, um, if people, cause people watch this from all over the world. Mm -hmm. Um, so how can they best get in touch with you if they would like to see Michael's meanies in their hospital? Um, you can go on, we have a Facebook page, which mm -hmm. lists all of our information. We have a website. It's, you know, michaelsmeanies.com. The, the Facebook page is Michael's Meanies. Um, and you can go there. That has everything. And yet, yeah, if you know a hospital that we've missed or I can't get for some reason, don't have a connection there, please let me know. We'll get them out to them. Um, or if you know an individual, you know, sometimes they've missed it in the hospital or, you know, right, so, right. Uh, we have a good friend of ours and she sees the stories, you know, like on the news or whatever. She'll be like, did you send one to this one? And if I don't catch it, she will, or another friend will say, you know, mm -hmm. so we send them to them. That's wonderful. So, um, you will continue this in, until they find a cure, I guess, right? That's it. That's what, yeah. I mean, you know, I would love that to be tomorrow, but I don't think that that's going to happen. So we'll just, we're going to carry on and just keep doing what we're doing. Well, I think that, uh, you know, I, you know, I think the world of Michael, I, I just thought he was a most amazing young yeah. man. Yeah. Um, he just yeah. loved when you and Kelly were over there. He was like, uh, Oh my <laughs> at the radio station he could get you two going all the time <laughs> i know and you know um we miss him terribly and i can't even imagine how you as his mother must miss yeah. him but i feel like your relationship continues yeah you no know, um, oh yeah it's on a different realm now i mean it is completely different you know like i said we just paul and i and, and my mom we just keep pushing each other that's all we can do you know and and you're providing comfort for so many people. That's, um, like I said, you know, if we're really feeling down, then, you know, we can look at, you know, we have books and, you know, uh, pictures and, you know, so that's just yeah. what we do. Well, thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for joining us. And uh, thank you for continuing um, Michael's mission. You didn't have to do this. Like you say, you know, I was just Michael's mom. I wasn't Linda. I wasn't the front person. People didn't know my name, you know, right. um, but you stepped way out of your comfort yeah. zone, yes. um, you know, seriously. And yes. you are carrying on his mission bigger than he could have probably even imagined. So I know he is up there smiling down. I hope so. <laughs> I'm sure he's, uh, you know, adding some, some, advice. adding some side jokes to yeah. it. I'm sure. Yeah, I know he is, but yeah, I know. Now but, if we go to your Facebook page, Michael's meanies, yeah. um, is there a place where we can donate to? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's on there. That's it's on the website. Yeah. If someone wants to make a donation, they're more, you know, we always take that. It's As Michael said, ball. we always need money. Yeah, I love <laughs> it. So for, for those of you who are just joining us, um, Linda Carroll is um, Michael's mother. Michael developed when he was diagnosed the second time with cancer. These things called Michael's meanies. They're stress balls that he designed that are kind of caricatures of three different cancer cells. And they have names and they were devised so that kids could just get ticked off at their cancer and have an outlet for that anger and frustration to go. And, um, and uh, his mission is carried on by his mother, his father, his grandmother, and all that have loved him. And I think what you're doing is absolutely awesome. So um, thank you so much for spending time thank with you. us. Thank you for agreeing thank to you. do this. I appreciate it so thank much. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yes. Good time. <laughs> Hopefully we'll get you in more hospitals. I hope so. Okay. Thank you. Linda, thank you so much. Thank Have a great day. You too. Bye-bye.